Hello, and welcome back to another episode of The Camera Brave Show. My name is Marissa, and I'm so honored that you're here with me today. In this episode, I'm going to talk about a topic that I get asked a lot about, which is energy. One of the very first podcast episodes I ever did was talking about your energy on camera. It's episode five, and it has been to date one of my most listened to podcast episodes. So today I wanted to take a sort of different approach and talk about how you can create energy by setting your intentions there, the different ways that you can create it, and how it affects everyone differently. Before we get started today, I'd like to ask for a super quick favor. If you would take just a moment of your time to go to Apple Podcasts, and write a review for the Camera Brave Show. I would sincerely appreciate your time. It really helps us gain momentum as we are reaching episode 20, which makes me so excited that we're almost 20 episodes into this show. Hosting my own show is something I've always wanted to do, so I'm just so excited to be able to have the platform and the ability to host it from home. That's that just blows my mind. So if you could just write a super quick review, if you're enjoying the show, I would very, very much appreciate that. Okay. Let's dive on in energy. First of all, I want it to be understood that you can create your own energy. Even if you're having an off day, even if you're having a bad day, you can still set the tone for your energy to be whatever you need it to be. Let's dive into exactly what we're talking about when we talk about energy. A lot of times we equate energy to emphasis. Let me explain what I mean. When we see someone on camera that is exciting or if we're listening to their voice and we hear all this emphasis, if they're talking like this and they're really excited, we're going to think, wow, they've got a lot of energy. <laughs> Versus if we hear someone that's a little more flat and they're talking like this and they're not emphasizing a lot and they're doing the same thing with their face, we're not going to think, wow, they have great energy. We're going to think they sound tired, right? So a lot of energy can boil down to the emphasis that you're either making with your facial expressions or your voice or your hands. And the tricky thing about this is that it is not one size fits all because we all have different ways of expressing ourselves. So I am someone who has always been an animated person. I've always been labeled as outgoing. I did theater when I was in high school. So I've always been a very expressive person. So I think that's one thing that's allowed me to build up the energy that I have is the expressions that I already naturally do. So expression is something that's unique to every individual person. It depends on if you're overexpressive, neutrally expressive, or if you're less expressive. And none of those are a bad or necessarily better thing. One thing when you're overexpressive and you have too much energy, I learned this back in my theater days, is that it's easier to bring that down than it is to take flat energy and build it up. So if someone's on stage and they have all of this energy, whether it's nervous energy, whatever sort of energy it is, it's easier for them to kind of channel it down, take a deep breath, and set their energy a little bit lower. Whereas if you're flat energy and you have that sort of nervous energy where you're more paralyzed and, and unable to move or speak, then that it's harder to boost that up a level and to create more energy from there. So that's been something that's been ingrained in my head for years and years now is it's easier to tone down energy than it is to boost it up. That being said, it does not mean that it's impossible to build it up. It's just an approach that I think has really shaped the way that I've come to delivery when it comes on camera is that I sort of hype myself up and I build myself up because I know that I can take a deep breath and channel it down a little bit versus if I'm feeling really flat it's going to be tougher to get that up a notch. So one thing that I reviewed in episode five, when I first touched on this topic of energy is that you set the tone for your energy. Think of it like an old radio, you set that tone. And then that is the frequency that is broadcasted out onto your phone, onto the screens. And that is what is received by your audience and your viewer watching. So if you are not taking the time to intentionally set your energy at a particular tone, then what are you transmitting? 
what are they going to pick up on? I hear a lot of people say that when they take video, they don't see their personality. They think that they're expressing themselves. They think that they look and sound authentic, just like in real life, but then they go and they watch it and it seems flat. And that all boils down to taking the time to set that tone. You set the frequency that others are going to pick up on. You are picking up on my naturally high energy frequency right now. Is that because I got 10 hours of sleep and skipped on over here to do this episode? No, <laughs> it's because I naturally run at a higher energy over expressive default. And I took my time to warm up and now I'm intentionally delivering this level of energy to you. Why? Because it is more entertaining to watch someone that has high energy than flat energy. Having flat energy will lose your audience's attention. Having flat energy will lose your audience's attention. Look, we're all busy. We all have a million and one forms of content that are jumping out at us that want our attention. So when it comes to the content that we're watching, we are going to err on the side of entertainment, things that can hold our attention. So if you're creating content that is flat and is less engaging, less animated, less expressive, it's not going to hold someone's attention as well as something that is more exciting, more expressive and animated and enjoyable to watch. So if you do not take the time to set your own tone of energy, it may be coming across as flat because you are not dialing into that frequency and being intentional about transmitting it. I am being very intentional about the level of energy that I'm transmitting right now to you because I've had my time to warm up. I know exactly where I want to be. And you'll learn that as you get started on video, you'll learn where you want to kind of transmit at. So the first step to figuring this out is decide where you lay by default. By default, are you a higher energy person or are you a lower energy person or are you just genuinely in the middle? And there's no right or wrong answer here, but the first step to knowing what you're transmitting is to know your default. When you're having a conversation, are you told that you kind of mumble a lot and do you kind of take your time to say your sentences and have lower energy? That's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but you need to understand that that's where you are on the spectrum. Or are you naturally out of bed like, hey guys, how's it going? And you have this more expressive animated air about you. In that case, you're a higher energy. So the first thing is you want to know where you are on the spectrum of energy. Are you on the lower side or are you on the higher side? The next step to this is knowing where you want to transmit. Take what you naturally have and decide how you want to come across on video. If you are coming across on video and watching yourself back and you are thinking, I am flat, I do not have my personality shining through in this video, then you need to amp it up. If you are watching yourself and you are going, I can't even sit still, my arms are flailing about my face, like I have crazy eyes. <laughs> if that's where you're at, then you're going to want to tone it down a little bit. You're going to want to find exactly what pitch you want to set. And there are no right or wrong answers here. However, the only way to be intentional about it is to, first of all, take a video. Second of all, watch it back. Now you can literally only watch back just a couple of seconds. You don't have to go crazy here. You can even like skim it and see the little thumbnail preview if you really can't stand to watch it back, but just watch back a couple of seconds. I know that's really tough, especially when you're in the beginning stages of taking video. However, that is the way to intentionally set your energy and it matters if you're thinking that this is like mumbo jumbo that doesn't matter this isn't like witchcraft energy of the earth this is the energy that people are picking up on when they're watching you this is the animation the expression this is what people are seeing and it matters and you have the power to set it at your own unique tone you have the ability to craft exactly what your energy is going to look like and what people are going to feel when they watch you. That's what it boils down to. When people watch you, there's going to be a feeling. Are they going to feel encouraged? Are they going to feel 
like they're being entertained. What are people going to feel when they watch your video? That has to do with the energy. Your content is so, so important. And that is the first priority you should have. However, if you're having flat delivery and you're coming across as monotone, people aren't going to keep coming back to your content. You have to keep them engaged. It's it's just a na the name of the game and it's not anything to do with you or your content. It's just that our brains are so wired to be looking at five different screens at a time. We're scrolling through Facebook on our phones while we're watching friends in the background while 500 other things are happening, while we're checking emails. I mean, it's constant, the things in our face. So having energy and having that ability to get someone's attention, tell them what you need to tell them, and then see you next time, that is gold, especially in today's age. So let's talk about how once you decide your default and once you know where you want to be on your energy spectrum, let's talk about how you can get there. Think of your energy as an oven, okay? You need to, first of all, set your temperature and then you need to give it time to preheat. That oven's got to warm up before you can put your food in. So set your temperature. That's what we just talked about, deciding where you want to be if you think you need to amp it up a little bit or if you want to hone it in a little bit more. Then give yourself time to warm up. I've never like explicitly talked about what I mean by warm up time. But let me tell you, warm up time for me looks like sitting in my living room and having a full on practice or conversation with myself before coming on here and talking to you guys. Yep, that's what my warm up time looks like. Because when I do that, when I go through my content out loud, when I actually talk it out, even if there is no one here and it's just me talking to me, whether I'm doing my makeup or I'm drinking coffee, that content always comes out better than when I just sit here and off the cuff try to deliver something or talk to you guys about something. When I take the time to actually finesse what I want to talk about and warm up, I'm able to iron out my content and I'm able to set that tone. I'm able to set the tone for my energy and I know exactly how I want to deliver it. That is what I mean by warm up time. Now, warm up time can look different for you. Maybe you don't have to say things out loud, but for me, it's actually speaking the words and ironing out the concepts that make for the best content. Think of it like an oven. You're setting your temperature and then you're letting it warm up before you put food in. You're not just throwing food in and hoping for the best. You have to let it acclimate. You have to let it nuance itself. And I think that's part of my process and why I'm able to always have energy on camera. It's because I allow myself time to warm up. Another thing is knowing the types of content and video that are life-giving and that are less than life-giving. You may have heard me talk about my battle with Facebook Lives. To me, Facebook Lives are not life-giving. Do I still do them? Yes. Are they 99% of the content I do? No way. I have found content that gives me life, that I enjoy creating, that I'm excited about and that I want to deliver and that I enjoy. Podcast episodes, turning those into YouTube videos. I just had a group coaching call the other night. Those are life giving things to me or creating trainings, showing you guys how to create Instagram reels, things like that even creating Instagram reels. Those are all life-giving types of content. So when I go into those, I'm already ready. I'm excited about them. Versus if I do a Facebook Live, I have to put in more effort. I have to put in more effort to have energy. I have to realize, look, I'm not gonna waste my time. If I'm doing a Facebook Live, because that's the name of the Facebook game, those are still getting good reach on Facebook. So I definitely will do Facebook Lives. However, I have to get myself in the mindset of, girl, just get through it. Have no expectations of people watching. Assume that you may not be broadcasted on the first try and get through your content because it's good. Have your energy set and just go and deliver and punch it out and then you're done.
and then do not worry about how many eyeballs or comments or how much engagement it got while you were live because that does not matter because it's going to continue to get engagement after. So finding the types of content that are life-giving versus less than life-giving for you is another huge area on how you can improve your energy. Another tip I have for you, if you fall on the flatter side of the energy spectrum, then consider talking about something that you are super passionate about. Passion can breed energy. Talking about things that get us excited and that we love, that makes us get more animated and expressive because we feel passionate. We want to share this with the world. We want to talk about it. We see a problem and we want to solve it. We want to work through it. And that's exciting. That can be transmitted as energy. So if you're falling on that flatter side, find something that really gets you fired up. Have your warm up time. Get fired up. Get excited. Get into it and then push record then go live, then create that reel. Let that passion fuel you and you will see a difference in your energy 100% because people can tell when we're passionate about something. People can tell that we're talking about something that we enjoy and that is life giving to us. You can 100% tell. The other person on the side of that screen, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can tell that I could talk about energy all day because I have endless amounts of it No, because I know how important it is. I know how to channel it. I know how to make it exist. And I know how to get here and talk to you guys for as long as this conversation needs to be. And then I know I can turn it off like a light switch and go lay on my couch. Because when you can learn how to set your own tone, that's exactly what you can do. You can turn it on like a light switch and then you can turn it off. But knowing where you stand, knowing where you want to go and knowing the best ways to get there, such as warm up time and creating content on life giving platforms, those are the ground rules for being able to turn your energy on like a light switch. Even if you're having an off day, even if you're having a rough day, let that passion fuel you. Let that excitement that you get on talking about something drive you forward. Friends, this is how you can create energy and friends, energy matters to that person watching your video. Energy is what is keeping them engaged. Energy is what keeps them coming back to you. And you, no matter how unexpressive you feel that you are, no matter how introverted you may feel that you are in your daily life, you still have the ability to create an energy that is authentic to your personality and bring that with you on camera. You don't have to be this bubbly, over animated person like myself, if that's not authentic to you, that's me in real life when I'm excited. So that's what I bring to you. But if that's not you, then don't try to deliver that. Try to get passionate about what you want to talk about and be okay with being okay at it. Be okay with delivering things that you feel like are not perfect, are not effortless, are not where you want to be. Because that is the only way that you're going to get to that next step is by delivering content that you may not feel was amazing. That's okay. As long as you are working at it, as long as you are intentionally like, okay, woo, gonna psych myself up, gonna get going, and then I'm gonna deliver this content. Bam, feeling it. There's your energy. There are ways to create it no matter where you are on the spectrum, because if you are listening to this and if you're interested in learning about your energy on camera, that means that, you know, video is so important and that, you know, not everyone that you see on camera is an extrovert or is outgoing. There are ways that you can still craft your own personality on camera, no matter where you are, no matter what your personality is and enjoy the process, because once you can take the energy, turn it on. It's amazing. You can get up and create things no matter what's going on in your current situation. If you feel like this message really resonated with you or would be powerful to someone else, would you please do me a favor and share it with them? I get in my DMs. One of the most talked about topics is I do not look like I have energy on camera or I feel flat when I look back at myself on camera. And I personally get a lot of feedback of you are authentic and you have a great personality on camera. And it's really just a matter of developing your system. This is my system and it's creating energy. 
and distributing that energy. I'm transmitting it to you. It's not an accident. It's intentional. So if you think that that process would really resonate with someone, would you please do me a favor and share this episode with them? If you're sharing it on Instagram, you can tag me in it. And I would love to know exactly who you're sharing this with and how energy could be impacting their content. Thank you so much for listening in with me today. As always, you can find me over at Camera Brave on Instagram and Facebook. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you next time on the Camera Brave Show.